Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason Newland and this is Boring Objects. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Today I'm going to talk about bricks. Now I think bricks are quite useful, especially for things like walls. Um, they can be used to build houses. Um, I guess you could use them to build like a a shed. I mean, in the old, you know, when I was a lot lot younger. Some of the old houses that I used to uh, live in may, yeah, still had old coal sheds in the garden. And that's where the people that lived in the house would keep their coal. Because in the past, most people would use fireplaces. They would have fireplaces inside the house. Uh, I guess if it was outside, it would be called a bonfire, but inside the house they would have fireplaces and I think originally wood was used and then coal started to be used instead of wood although sometimes I think some of the wood that was used was called kindling which was still used with the coal to kind of keep the fire going or maybe to get the fire started that was a weird noise my stomach's making some strange sounds whenever I talk about bricks my stomach seems to react and I don't know why in fact it's never happened before so oh there it goes again so I, th I think the probably one of the tallest things that I have seen that is made of bricks was a really long chimney at the hospital. I think there's also a water tower which was really big which kind of makes sense I suppose because there's no point building something that only collects a small amount of water and that was made of bricks as well Hmm. Trying to think of other things that were or are still made of bricks, but hmm, I can't think of anything. Walls are often made of bricks. However, 
I've travelled to different parts of the country and I've noticed that a lot of walls, like really, really old walls, were made of like boulders and rocks. Also, I think that in some mining villages that used to have mines, they would use the the content of what they dug up to get to the coal or to whatever salmon or whatever they were digging for. They uh, used that to also build things, I think, but it may not be true. It was more of a guess, an uneducated guess, as most things sometimes are. Oh, my stomach's still going weird. Other things you could use bricks for is to build a, like a base for a barbecue, an outdoors barbecue. Maybe even, mm, hmm, maybe bottom of a table like a I know that's the legs and I suppose the legs of a table would be made of bricks <sighs> but I've I've had experiences with bricks over the years when I was I think for 14 years old, I did work experience for two weeks at a building firm. And some of the time I just sat in the office smoking and drinking coffee and gin talking about the good old days with a cat and other times I would go out with the traders you know the, the traders the tradesmen that were working there the builders there was a bricklayer who actually lived across the road from me and he kept teasing me about having a smelly finger for some reason and I still to this day am not sure what he meant but it amused him endlessly yeah and When I watched him building the wall, I think it was, well, no, it was outside, but it was, I think it was like an extension to a house. And I thought to myself, I quite like that. I'd quite like to be a bricklayer. seemed like something that I could do as a career. Although now, even though there's still probably 17 years before I'm able to retire, I don't think I could physically do bricklaying because of all the bending over. It's not just all the farting I'd end up doing, but it's the uh, my lower back, 
is a little bit problematic. So I don't think I would be able to be a bricklayer anymore. Although that's not really an issue because I never was a bricklayer. So there's possibly no point mentioning it. Um, got a bit of a cough. <coughs> See? A little bit of a cough. So, yeah, the, the brick layer, I thought, hmm, I might like to do that because it's in the fresh air. It's, I imagine, quite well paid. And it was physical, which is something that I enjoyed doing at that time in my life and consequently or subsequently or therefore or ultimately I ended up doing a lot of physical jobs throughout my teens, my late teens and twenties. Always physical. I didn't have any sitting down on a chair in front of a computer work not until I was in my thirties when I started working in insurance sitting down on a chair all day in front of a computer now that building was quite a big building I don't know how many bricks were used But I guess I didn't really need to know that. And I probably didn't need to mention that in the job interview. But they didn't mind. I guess they were just desperate to have someone to answer the phones. Yeah. One day, during the job experience, the work experience, I think that the boss had run out of things for me to do, because I'd spent a day with the bricklayer, I'd spent a day with the plasterer, <coughs> I spent a day with the... <coughs> Um, carpenter and he could see into the living room of a house opposite because he was upstairs and he could see their television clearly from the workshop and I remember him saying that every day when he comes into work, the television's on, and it's on all day long. And then when he goes home at five, the television's still on. And I remember saying to him, why are you telling me this? What's this got to do with carpentry? And what am I supposed to learn from you being a peeping Tom? He said, I'm not a peeping Tom. I'm a carpenter. And I said, they're not, you know, you're totally, you're not, being one doesn't exclude the other. And he said, well, what's your problem? And I said, well, I've got ingrown toenail in my right big toe. And uh, I don't know, I'm quite a slow walker. 
he said is that is that connected the ingrown toenail and being a slow walker and I said I'm, I'm not sure I think I've always been a slow walker but only recently have I had an ingrown toenail what do you think has caused the ingrown toenail and I said that uh, I wasn't sure really but now I think of it I think it might be that my shoes are too tight and he, he said let me shoot. Let me see your shoes. I said, well, I don't really want you to. You can look down if you like, because they're on my feet. And he said, okay. Well, what size feet are you? I said, that's a bit personal, really, isn't it? He said, not really. I said, okay then. I'm size ten. Actually, I'm thinking about it, probably back then I wasn't, was I? I was probably about size 9, because I'm, I'm a size 10 now. And I think my feet were pretty much fully grown. By the, yeah, by the, side, by the time I was 15, I'm pretty sure my feet were grown up. The rest of me was still a little boy, but my feet were manly. Perhaps that's why I had ingrown toenail. I said to him, I said to the carpenter, I said, maybe it's because my feet grew uh, much quicker than the rest of my body. And he said, well, that is weird. But I don't think that's the problem. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, take your shoes off and just, just stick them on the counter. So I said, well, what, what if my feet get cold? I might cry. And he said, don't, don't worry. Just, just, just for a second. So I did, I put my, my shoes on the counter. And he said, there's your problem. I said, well, yeah, I know we were just, if the shoes are too tight, then obviously they're the problem. I don't know why you're stating the obvious. He said, no, not that. You know what the real problem is? I said, uh, all your questions? He said, no. The real problem is that. And he pointed. I said, what do you mean? He said, they're ballet shoes. I said, so? He said, they're ballet shoes for a little girl. I said, that's sexist. That's very sexist. Lots of men do ballet. And he said, no, it's 1984. A lot of men do not do ballet. It is mainly women. I said, oh. I forgot what year we were in. He said, exactly. So don't try and pull the sexist card out on me. When actually the reality is that most ballet dancers are women. I said, yeah, but men do do it now. The most famous ballet dancer in the world is Ruli Bonchnechikov. He said, you made that name up, didn't you? I said, yeah, but I can't remember. It's, I think it's a Russian, Russian uh, ballet dancer. He said, you haven't really heard of him, have you? I said, no, not really. He said, well, wow, it's quite a good guess because there actually is a Russian uh, ballet dancer and he is the most famous ballet dancer in the world. But it's still mainly women that do ballet. It, 
1984. I said, why do you keep messing, sort of stressing the year? He says, I don't know. I'm not sure, really. He said to me, how, how long have you wanted to be a ballet dancer? I said, I'm not a ballet dancer. And I've never wanted to be a ballet dancer. And he asked, well, why are you wearing a little girl's ballet shoes? I said, they were hand-me-downs. He said, uh, well, how many sisters do you have? I said, I don't have any, I've just got brothers. And then he handed me a brick. So that was one of one of the brick stories. Another brick story is they got me sorting out the red bricks from the white bricks on a there's a big big pile of bricks in the yard, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's still one of my fondest memories. Involving bricks. It was a lot of fun. I felt like I was really contributing something to society. Like my, my like I felt like my life had meaning. As, as I s sorted through those bricks. It just... I felt for the first time a sense of purpose and I was very, very I still do feel very grateful for that opportunity to be able to sort the different bricks from each other that's that brick story and the last brick story was involves my dad. A brick fell on his head. No, it didn't. He got me pointing the house uh, or one wall of the house. And for those that don't know what pointing is, he didn't just have me standing there pointing at the house. It's actually where you take out the cement from between the bricks, the old cement, and then you put in new cement, which strengthens the... Br I actually don't know what the reason for it was. In fact, I think my dad would might have been making it up just to see whether or not I could stand on a ladder while he shook it from the bottom. But I did that as well, so I did pretty much a hole of a wall. And I quite enjoyed that as well. And I think it might have rained at some point. But because I was in the alleyway, the rain didn't seem to really uh, hit me because it seemed to be blown across. So the rain was hitting the wall behind me, but not my wall. And I continued with my little tr shovel, travel, trowel, trowel, yeah. To just put in that fresh cement between the bricks. And it also helped the rain to just slide off the wall, apparently. But I might have made that up. And that's pretty much all of the brick stories that I can think of. So thanks for listening. 
Yeah, that's it. 